What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell, of course, the founder of the Jay Campbell Podcast. I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual studio by my longtime amazing friend, Robert Stanley. Robert, how are you, brother? Good, Jay. Nice to be with you again. It's so awesome to have you here today. So um, Robert really doesn't need an introduction for most of the people that follow my podcast, but um, he is basically the founder and the uh, publisher of unicusmagazine.com. And his site is an amazing, amazing repository of information on enhancing consciousness, awareness, uh, the esoteric, ufology. I mean, I, I could go on and on and on. It's one of the best, most amazing repositories found online. And Robert has been just an incredibly profound uh, resource, um, really mentor of mine, uh, researcher, author. I mean, he's done so many things. He's also a musician. Um, I mean, I could go on and on. I love, I have such a profound uh, love of Robert, but uh, we're very excited to have him today on the show, me and him going one-on-one. I've done podcasts with him previously. Uh, I've obviously done podcasts with him and Rex together and also uh, Jeff Doherty. Uh, but this is our first time to really go like deep one-on-one. And I'm excited about that because it's February 13th today when this podcast is doing and we're in 2020 and we find ourselves in a very interesting time. Do you, do you not agree, Robert? Yeah, absolutely. Every day, it's just another surprise. Another surprise. Okay. So, I mean, we're really going to free flow this. We don't really have any topics um, specifically. I was actually just on Robert's radio show um which is k k k g r a is that right that's the station the the actual name of the show is called the unicus radio hour unicus radio hour on k k g r a which was last saturday evening and robert and i were on for about two hours you know probably about an hour and 20 minutes or 30 minutes of real talk time and it was profound man our conversation was amazing Hmm. we've gotten feedback i've gotten feedback um and you know that's 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 kind of where I am right now is like, I want to bring people on the podcast that are contributing, um, you know, to the conscious awareness of what this is, whatever this earth realm existence that we are all in right now. And so I think, you know, just, let's just go that way. You know, I, you know, I'm just going to just ask you topics and we'll just comment on them. But like, you know, what is your thoughts right now on just the idea of what the coronavirus represents? Mm, well, it's obviously coming from the dark side. It's not from a wet market. I saw plenty of those when I was in Hong Kong. Right. And they're fascinating. I took a lot of pictures. They're very colorful. The smells are sometimes overwhelming. But the people are obviously very animated. And that's their, that's part of their life. You know, they're happy to go there and get that fresh food. And um, yes, it's exotic compared to what we think of when we go to a reg- regular market and uh, here, what we call regular. It's normal for them, right? Yeah. Especially for poor people or, you know, lower class people there. The, the, some of the stuff they eat is, it's like, that's why I took so many pictures. Because you never see that stuff anywhere. And it's very colorful. But um, anyway, yeah, I, I'm sure this has been weaponized. Something that exists. Viruses are uh, plenty, they're plentiful. I got some examples of viruses here. <laughs> <laughs> They grow on the grow on the tree outside my room here. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, can you just imagine something like that going into your lungs oh, or your uh, oh, a bloodstream? Right. It's really sharp. You can't. I don't know why this this camera should be picking no, it up. No, you can see it. Yeah, you can see it. See how sharp those things are. Crazy, and anyway, yeah, that's what are those things called? Burberries or what are those? Something things? like that. Yeah, it's like, but it looks like a giant virus. Yeah. And um, so. One of the things I told you about, and I guess I'll mention it to your to your audience, is I've been uh, I've been taking this for a while. It's called Kumanda. Yeah, we bought it. Daughters used it. So anyway, it's uh, it's something that you can get online, and there's a company in Florida that I usually use, but you can get it anywhere. You can buy it. It's it's from the Amazon. It's a tree bark, and it has antifungal and antibacterial properties. And um, 
Well, my daughter was, by the way, really sick when you said to buy that. Yeah. And yeah. literally she was on six and a half, almost seven days of augmentin, very powerful antibiotic, no yep. cure. Yep. Use that at high dose for a day and a half was yep. better, three days. Yeah. And I've had success with viruses before, different kinds, because it is antiviral as well. At least that's what it claims. And like I said, I did use it. Uh, and so... I, I don't know. That's just one of the things that you can do. I, I'm not really freaked out by it that much. Right. Um, but because, like I was reading statistically, when you go in the ocean, uh, one mouthful of seawater is like 50 million viruses right. <laughs> in your, that you swallow, right? And it actually viruses have been known to cause bacteria to behave in a way that's actually life-sustaining. So I don't think that all viruses are you know, considered to be dissonant or evil, mm. right? But, or, or from the dark side, but this is something that, that clearly has been manipulated, just like, you know, so everything else is coming out of these bio warfare labs. It's they take something in nature and they distort it. So what do you think, obviously I'm in agreement, but what do you think is the long-term, and again, oh. this is just speculation and high, supposition on your part, but what was yeah. the long-term goal of creating this and unleashing it on China, because obviously I could make an argument and, ver and, and, and very uh, logically supportive that this is economic war and that what has been going on between the China, you know, China and the United States has been going on for 20 years. I mean, you're very aware living in Hong Kong that obviously, you know, whether it's true or not, there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes about intellectual property and the mm -hmm. theft and all the things that have gone on. So this is kind of like what we've been told, again, whether it's real or not, Trump is pushing back or Trump and his allies or Trump and his group. And this is isolationism being practiced by the United States. So it's a deep, we, we both think it's a dark side, deep state, you know, agent, but is there something to it that this is like a retaliation for isolationism wanting to start over again and that you know the chinese well, i guess i'll ask you what is your opinion of what the long-term ramifications of why this is happening in china is well it, it's happening all over the world it's not just china just it, it started there allegedly it well was, that's my question do you think it started yeah. in wuhan being that no. it's like a giant area of commerce and manufacturing that it was oh no no i mean we know for a fact that bio warfare agents biological agents that have been weaponized got out of have it's funny how they always say they just got out of right. places right that are right. supposed to be level four or level three right. labs but plum island right there in the the it's right off of long island in connecticut right, right, i forget right, right. I, I there's a like a little sound in there. anyway so the plum island is out there and uh it's they that's where lyme disease came from well, they, they weaponized the mycoplasma. That's also uh, not the same place, but uh, Fort Detrick area is also right. where um, Ebola and AIDS and uh, this coronavirus, all these things are coming out of the United States. Um, yes, we have other facilities that we partner with in Canada and elsewhere. But yeah, there was supposedly it was stolen from Canada, brought to Wuhan and accidentally released and all this stuff. In, accidentally. Yeah, yeah, right. Always. It's always like that. Um, but but then come on it's like how many times does this have to happen before we start to re really look at what's going on why they're, they're deliberately delivering this stuff this toxin into the environment to, to debilitate humanity and it's not going to stop in my opinion there unless they are stopped entirely these these individuals so-called as i told you before life scientists that's what they call them the people that work in these labs even though they actually create death right um, they, they, they have to be stopped at some point or they'll just kill everybody and everything because they're distorting the natural order. So what is the long-term goal? It's what I told you before. I really, because my wife had asked me this, what's the point of killing all these people? And it's not just for the environment. It's not that the planet could actually sustain a lot yeah. more people than we're being told. For sure. Okay. It, if, if everything was equitable and we were, were using systems that are sustainable and um, less polluting. All right, we don't have to pollute the planet. Okay, that's a choice. Um, so the the thing is, I told you before, and I really believe this is a lot of the souls that are being tormented to death here through these various toxins, whether they're biological or uh, electronic or other things. Um, 
we're all targeted in that regard because the dark side wants to bring us into the lower astral and even right. lower realms than that. Right. That's the only th thing I can rationalize why this is happening. Mm -hmm. So we both believe and we don't believe it's almost a knowing that the web of light is here and you can connect with it. You know, you yeah. can elevate your vibration, do the things that we always talk about, be compassionate, kind, concerned, caring, loving, peaceful, forgiving, allowing, accepting all those things. Um, with when you don't have fear, you know, you're, you're not going to, as you said, you're not going to worry about a so-called virus in China, you know, cause like you said, you can walk out to the ocean and swallow a million viruses, in one, you know, bolt of salt, salt water. So you, you can't think like that, but do you think though, knowing that the majority of humanity right now is resonating in dissonance, lower vibration, victim consciousness, whatever. Do you think that this is part of the plan though, is just to enhance the fear? Yeah, absolutely. So we were talking about DNA off the air. You sent me some stuff from Dan Winter. It's fascinating, but I just, to be really simplistic about it, DNA actually constricts and becomes less conductive when we're in a dissonant mode, when we're in exactly. fear and anger. Exactly. And that's one of the reasons they want, see, so when they induce fear and anger in us, or I should say, when we choose to accept that right. level of fear and, and, and you know, anger, it, it causes the DNA to constrict, right. become less conductive or connected right. to everything else, including the web of light. And they're doing this to us deliberately so that they can, so we will remain subjects of their evil empire. So what is the solution? And I know it's an opinion <laughs> question. I mean, we talk about this for years, but yeah, we both, we both, seem to think that the good guys are not coming to save us. They never have. It's not, it's outside of their universal law conscript, conscript, most likely. We don't know, but we think. How do we, as a species, and again, you know, obviously raising the vibration is what we have to do. We know that, but like, what can we do right now proactively, meaning people like me and you, to help other people get to a point where that, that awareness, that fear awareness, that living in, dissonance can be changed. Well, so the opposite is true when we are courageous and loving and kind, and more importantly, when we're calm. You know, one of the other diagrams or things that you sent me earlier about being super conductive. Right. When you look at a diagram, you can see that the molecules are moving very fast and they're sort of random. They're just moving like this. Right. But when they lower the temperature down, these things tend to become more orderly and move slower yeah. naturally. So, and, and oddly enough, that's, that's what allows less resistance and more conduct, conductivity and more, more connectivity right. connections. We're kind of about, talking about coherence. So um, this is again, why, if you remember what I've said before many times, I kind of get sounding like a broken record about being calm and kind and creative. It, it's, it starts with being calm because, and it's, a, it's terribly hard to do in this, in this world. You know, that's why they're constantly bombarding us with, uh, you know, provoking us, including those emails I've been getting lately. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's comical because honestly, it's the same story over and over and over again. It's so obvious. The identifiers are so clear when it's coming from the dark side, it, you feel it. You yeah. feel it in a, in a very negative way. You know, like the beach boy said, good vibrations. Well, you can feel that too. The negative stuff, it's so obvious. You can't hide it. And it's and in fact, especially now, as I told you before, between 2013 and the end of 2022, everything was going to be revealed. And it is. It's happening right now. It has to because, and you know, the, the funny thing about the dark side is that they're very desperate to keep us in the dark with them. Right. So, so they're, they're going through these, these like temper tantrums. And in the process, they're revealing themselves because they're just, they, they don't know what else to do. I mean, I have to ask the question. I mean, I think we both go back and forth. Is Trump repping the web of light? Does he represent the web of light? Is he repping? Is he working with those? Yeah, who is he an agent of, of the light? Yeah, I, at times I feel like he is. I think, though, you know, look, I, I spent years delving into the dark side yeah. behind the scenes of Washington, D.C. I mean, it started off with a simple photograph and, you know, two books, 800 pages later and all these radio shows and interviews and stuff with other people. Um, it just made me realize that there is Washington, D.C., the city of London, 
the inner city of London right. and the Vatican are all three linked up. Right. And they're all fortresses of darkness. Absolutely. Okay. So, so whatever's going on in DC to walk in there, I mean, essentially you'd have to, he, if I understand this correctly, and I, I really felt it last year, uh, I talked to Jeff about this because he's been a minister and he understands exorcisms pretty well. Yeah. And I told him, just like I'm going to tell you and your audience, I felt July, I think it was July 5th when Trump gave, um, he was doing some kind of rally or speech or something, right? In, in, in Washington, D.C. It was right and before, by the way, it was right before the, remember the earthquake, earthquake in earthquake. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I felt like he was performing an exorcism of the demonic forces in Washington, D.C. That's what it felt like to me. Now, I don't know if, he, if that's what his intent was. I doubt he would ever say that publicly because he would be slammed. Obviously, he's being slammed for everything, even if it's just something really obvious, like trying to get better trade deals with other countries and bring more jobs back and just, you know, making America great again. But if he, you know, to, in order to truly represent the web of light, you have to understand the making earth great again. Yeah. Okay. And there's no, there is no position. You can't be, you know, it's, what is it? Inspector general of the United Nations. Is that the highest thing there? That's a yeah, joke. Exactly. US, the, yeah, exactly. That person does not, re <laughs> does not represent the well being of the planet. And this is the other thing that goes back to the Ami books that you can read at my website, unicusmagazine.com. Those are amazing books because even though they're written for children, actually some of those lessons or insights are profound because it shows what a civilized world really looks like as opposed to an uncivilized world is unfortunately what earth is at this time. So we're, we are not there yet. And the way that the system is set up is so corrupt. When, you know, they talk about draining the swamp. That if even if they even if it is successful in Washington D.C., there's still London and and the Vatican to contend with. Right. And you you kind of see this. You kind of see that people are, around the world are pro, not just protesting. They are really upset because it has been revealed. It is being revealed. In fact, that's the one thing in China that's coming out about this coronavirus is that the the draconian tyranny of the dark side there is so out in the open that people are freaking out because they're, they're faced with their mortality and it, it just shocks them awake when they see how brutal the system is. You know, it's like, you know, there's, there's an innate in, in thing in humans that we call the, the, the Milgram syndrome or the Stockholm syndrome, right? Where you just, you kind of capitulate with your captors, yes. no matter how cruel they are in order to survive. It's a survival, survival mechanism. mechanism. Yeah. yeah. And, but at some point, you can get snapped out of that and if you're in the right circumstances, you know, especially when your loved ones around you are sick and dying <laughs> and you're being told just, Hey, too bad. Right. Be a good communist, you know, right. support the party, die. You must die in your apartment <laughs> or whatever it is. You know, I'm sorry. It's not funny, but it's no, so it's, crazy. No, it is. I mean, it's funny because it's so shocking, but it, you know, it is. Really and it's waking, but see, it's waking people up. And so they're making a choice that like, no matter what, we are not going to accept this level of oppression and tyranny and dissonance. So that's, it, it's serving, I know it's an unintended consequence, but it's, it's happening. Yeah. And, and, I, and I agree with you. It's funny you just meant that the, 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 you said draconian, and, I, and we might as well just mention it. <laughs> Why is it, it's so obvious. And again, you know, I, I, I point to, and, and, and again, you've read so many of the different books and stuff like that. But, you know, Pierre Sabak, who Jeff and I have done a couple podcasts with now, uh, and you should have him on your show, by the way. He's in England, so you'd have to do it, you know, figure yeah. it out. He'd have to wake up early, whatever, on Saturday night. He sh he he'll do it. But um, he's decoded the draconians. He's, he's, he's completely and fully decoded the seraphic versus the proto-human, war in heaven, you know, what they are, who they are, what, what you know dimension of the universe or the cosmos they come from you know orion you know it, it, it's all there it's like you said it's all out in the open now but why are so many people still reluctant to believe in any of the mythos again draconian reptilians i mean i mean why, why do you think that is why do people just want to just exist in their bubbles well, I, the analogy I've been giving for years, and I don't really like it, but it's the best one I can think of, is the way that uh, when in America, when slaves were brought over from Africa, right. 
usually bought from Muslim tribes. Right. So uh, they were selling, they were selling, they were selling themselves. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, they also would capture other people, yeah. neighboring tribes yeah. or families, and, they, and then they would sell them for money, you know, right. that's how it went. Um, yeah. Or they would just keep, you know, what is it, half the world, there's, it's slavery is still legal yeah. on this planet, essentially. It's really nuts. Anyway, so the reason I'm bringing it up it is, is because true. in America, it was, especially in the, the original, on the plantations, it was illegal to educate a slave how to read and write because they knew these so-called slave owners um, knew that an educated slave would be much harder to control. Exactly. And that is who we are as subjects of the empire. We, we are enslaved in many regards. I know it's hard to accept that. So, you know, the implications are enormous. And when you start down this path of awakening, mm -hmm. it, it's scary. And so right. even though the, the information is available if you look for it, but then what? Yeah. Right. It's a, it's a really, really, it's, it's a proverbial rock in a hard place. Well, it's, it's fascinating that you and I and other people like us can have these type of conversations and it's just like, Hey, matter of fact, you know, we don't mm -hmm. have fear. We've opened up our heart. We've done the inner work. We know what's up, but you know, other people that are connected to us and our families and stuff like that are so gone and so like not able to, accept any of that or even receive it in the slightest bit. And so to me right now, the issue for me and my personal life, and I'm very blessed and obviously so are you that we are married to people <laughs> that are not, you know, that are like us and are accepting and, and aware and, and, and awake. But think of all these people, Robert, that we know who aren't, you know, and like you said, and we both agree, we're close to whatever is going to happen happening. And so it's like, you know, within a year and a half, it, it, you know, what are all these people going to, how, again, it's opinion, I guess, but what do you think yeah. is going to happen to all these people who are not awake? What happens uh, to them? Does, do, do they go into shock? I mean, again, what do you think yeah. happens? Yes. Yeah, so I was, the way it was shown to me when I asked how this could be all be resolved, um, that we were all going to be forced to wake up. And you know, it's, they say it's dangerous to wake somebody up who's sleepwalking. Absolutely. Um, because the shock, and yeah, it's going to be, it is dangerous, but it, it's, it's necessary. No other option, yeah. yeah, there isn't at this point. So some people probably will have, you know, heart attacks. That, that's what I was going to say. And, you know, I, I did a reading with an Akashic Records person earlier in the year and very advanced. And we did, we, we, we did some really good stuff. And that's what she told me. She said that, you know, she doesn't see, she sees a lot of people opting out. Yep. Their but soul that will choose. Yes, but. In a way, that's you're advocating your ability or your your of course, your, of course, but it'll, free will because there's but so, isn't that just going to be the fear response? Literally? But there's still but here's the point. Yeah. They, it, by doing that, they end up in the lower astral anyway. Right, absolutely. To absolutely. deal with whatever, and then they'll reincarnate to and absolutely. get another yeah. chance to move up. So so anyway, it's, let, let's let's be clear about something from yes. my perspective. Sure. The reptilians. This was their planet. Absolutely. Okay, we know that from the fossil record, we whether you want that. to argue against that or not. We do know that. We do know that. Well, some people like to say it was all done by Satan and, you know, okay. But the truth of the matter is this was a reptilian planet, pure and simple. Even Sagan wrote about that. The uh, He did. He sure right? did in that book. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, we are the invaders in that regard. And that doesn't make it, look, and that doesn't mean that whatever the, the reptilians do is, is okay. But just to be honest, to be fair, yeah. I think we started it here. And I think that, that my, my personal gut feeling is that, that they're still here wherever. Okay. And they, they're upset. And I think they have a, you know, they have a right to be. But the secrecy is, is also coming not just from them, but the, uh, the leadership here, so-called the leadership here. Yeah. And the fact that, both the reptilian leadership and the human uh, leadership is very much caught up in the web of, of darkness or the web of lies right. coming from the lower astral. Right. Right. Yeah. It would be interesting. That's so we agree. And it, I don't think there's really no, there's really no way to know. I mean, there's great researchers that have decoded a lot of different things. It's just, you know, what is, what, what, what were the Gnostics talking about when they talked about, 
you know, Yalda Bayoff, the Demiurge, whatever you want to call it, like Yahweh, Lucifer, all of this shit, Pata, like, you know, Enki, Enlil, Marduk. I mean, who are they, Robert? Like, are they just invaders after the reptilians that came here that just coordinated the reptilian species and then just like enslaved them because of their higher aspect, their higher vibrational or higher density aspects? I mean, what do you think? Doesn't really matter what I think. All I know for a fact is that we don't have all the answers on this. It's being withheld from us. And all these little theories that people present as, right, the latest book or video or whatever. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a huge distraction. Huge freaking distraction from whatever is real. And I think the only way we're ever going to know is once we connect individually and then collectively. If once you connect to the web of light, you, you start getting more stuff downloaded, just like right now we're connected to the internet. It's a very poor copy yeah. of that. It's a very limited and very distorted copy very of the limited, web of light. Distorted, yeah. no coherence. Yeah. yeah, very little coherence of anything. I mean, even the people that supposedly are promoting love and light, a lot of that stuff is, there's a lot of toxicity built into it with fear about the bad guys you know they're always talking about the good guys are he, you know and you got to worship them but hey look out for the bad guys it's like yeah. hold on i, I don't want to play that game no okay it's because it's it's really not advancing my soul no and and ultimately only we can do that for ourselves through the choices that we make and the actions that we take it's it right. i know i always it, it's when i hear myself saying this stuff it's like wait a minute that sounds too simple for robert <laughs> Are right. you like, you know, can't you make it a little more complicated, but no, but that's true. I mean, again, it's the quantum physics or the law of resonance or whatever, you know, the law of attraction, essentially the law of vibration. I mean, you do create your reality, you know, through conscious words, you know, focused thoughts and massive actions or intentional actions, whatever, but it, it, it is true. It's just, there's just so many people, you know, I read a book the other day, I forget what it was the uh, mastering alchemy. Mm -hmm. Jim Self, I was I finished it and I was reading a section and he and he was talking about that we're already in the higher aspects dimensionality you know people want to call it five D whatever you want to call it but we're already in that you know it happened in 2012 mm -hmm. but people are so conditioned to follow patterned response thinking and acting mm -hmm. and speaking that people won't come out of it. And again, it's the whole idea of, like you said, dissonance of just staying in that lower vibrational frequency and repeating the same behaviors over and over again. So when they were start rolling out 6G in a couple of years, that'll be, that'll be the time when people like yourself and myself and others are, are going to move into a much more higher level of, of light right. and consciousness right. as in part as a survival mechanism, but also because we're sort of being forced into it. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's, uh, I said, unintended consequences. It's happened many times to me and others. I can see how it's going. So whether or not Trump was initially thinking about serving the light when he went in, maybe he had a, just a much smaller view of, Hey, I want to make America great for my kids. But then it became, once he got in there to the mag inner, what they call the beltway, the magic circle. Right. Uh, which causes your mind to go crazy, literally, intentionally. The energy inside that circle is pure dissonance. And they, you know, they were reporting that he had cabin fever. When he moved to the White House, no, he had Potomac fever. That's a thing. You can look it up. Yeah. It's called Beltway fever or Potomac fever. It's a real thing where your mind is just hijacked. Your soul is being bombarded with all this dissonance by the dark side. So, I think the fact that he survived this this long, um, he has help. He has help. He obviously never, and I'm not talking about the military, <laughs> okay? What else? No, I'm talking about the military in, there is a so-called God's army. Right, absolutely. Because that's, that's really what the Jedi are. Right. And they're not alone, but they're like special forces within this so-called army of God. And that they defend divinity. It's not about defending the Republic, although you got to understand, where were these deists, the so-called founding fathers, where were they at in their minds when they wrote the Constitution? It was coming from a higher plane. Exactly. They were connected to the higher levels of, of the etheric or astral or web of light. So, by the way, question on that, because it just popped into my head. When do you think 
the United States went bad. <laughs> um, well, it was it, just like the Masonic order. It was infiltrated. And that's well, usually how it was, it was in the 19th century, 20th century. Like, when do you think it really was? Oh, oh was, well, you, right you, before World War, I mean, uh, the Civil War is when it actually happened. When they instituted the banks. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, and it, I'm sure that's why they killed Lincoln is because he wanted to print his own money, greenbacks, right? Remember, and I, you know, I was a student of um, American presidents at one time in, in, in oh. high school and college. And remember, Andrew Jackson was the one that said the banks were the greatest. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think Rothschild, one of the Rothschilds, Amchel Rothschild has said, you know, I, I don't care who says they're in charge. It's the exactly. bankers that are really running the show. Well, that's okay because the, their whole house of cards is going to come collapsing down because it's built on sand anyway. The whole thing, this fiat currency is a joke. It's all about usury and interest. And um, that's why Jesus or Yeshua or whatever his name was, he was so pissed at them in the, in the temple, the money changers, because that's, they were just screwing everybody. And they still are. It's funny that you just said that because you and I were joking the other day about it. Like all these names, yeah. it's probably the same goddamn being or you know, um, what do you call it? Thought form, you know, the polemic. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's just, it, there's so many ways that they, they, you know, the dark forces, those who would hold us back have created yeah. a distraction, dissonance. That well, it's like impossible to know if any of those names ever resonated, you know, from a true standpoint. I mean, I, going back to what you said, yeah. I agree a hundred percent God's army. Yeah. You know, that's who we have to focus on. But even with that, you know, you think of the names of the archangels. Mm -hmm. What of that of those names have they corrupted? You know, there's Uriel and there's Gab Gabriel and you know Saint Michael and Serapis and I mean, it, dude, it's tough. You can only use your heart, right? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, go with your. Well, they, some people call it your gut. The solar plexus is very important. It's very, very much a, a, a connection point. Right. Okay, emotionally, but I think on a higher level, or I feel what we really feel emotionally comes through the heart ch chakra because there's just like that's where most of the electricity is going in from and coming out from as well. Right. It's a scalar wave, right? It goes two directions at the same time, and it's a spiral. When it, I know when we talk a lot about waves, dude, people just say, think, oh, it goes like linear, but actually, it doesn't. A lot of times it'll it'll kind of be, like back channel on itself right into a spiral and there's only two kinds there's a there's a kind of spiral in right. centripetal or they spiral out centrifugal most of all of our technology here right now is centrifugal right it's explosive it's not implosive right. and every time that you know people have tried to come up with devices that are implosive the system just doesn't accept that they find a way to squelch it yeah absolutely 100 percent true it's great. It's crazy. The whole idea of God's army, though, do you think, again, supposition, hypo hypothetical asking, um, do you think that God's army, again, people have been so brainwashed by Abrahamic religious teachings, <laughs> right? But yes. spiritually advanced people, and again, beyond the new age cosmology nonsense, but is God's army just a different, like higher dimensional form of you know, extraterrestrial, extraterrestrial, interdimensional, or are they truly divine, you know, aspects of source, meaning beings that are literally part of that? I mean, that, that, that to me is always a question, you know, because people ask that question and then you'll probably say it doesn't matter. But I think for some people, because they're so attached to the Abrahamic religious teachings, I think they, people, some people would like clarity on that, but you know, you're, mm -hmm. you're the guy to answer that. What do you think? I, well, I'm still working on it, to tell you the truth, because it is so convoluted down here. It's very hard to get a clear picture of anything. But I'll just put it this way. Yes, it's a hierarchy that there are specific levels. Let's put it in, in the context of school. Right. When you go to school, and let's say you're in the 10th grade, uh, you're not getting into the 12th. Right. You've got to go through the 11th. And why? Because there's a hierarchy. Those, those parameters are set up for a reason. And this is the same is true in the so-called etheric or astral realms. So whether you're in a physical body or not, you're still part of you is, is non-physical. Right. And it has to follow those protocols or parameters. And so, you know, we were talking about in this book, The Astral City, which you can also read on my website. So for free. And what it's, what the bottom line of all this is, the difference is, I should say, is in this world, and especially in this physical realm, 
everything is based on fiat currency. Okay, you, you, your credit system, the credit score here is all based on something totally corrupt. Whereas in the astral and or in a, in a, excuse me, in a physical world that is civilized, they don't use that system. It's all based on merit. Right, exactly. So this is again why the thoughts and deeds are so, 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 so important because that's your currency. That's, that's your credit. And it follows you. You can't corrupt that. See, that's the other amazing thing about it, to me anyway. We talk, we've talked, how do we solve all the problems here? Well, it would be pretty simple if we were to just catch a break, if it was a level playing field, but it's not. You know, we would figure it out if we weren't constantly being manipulated by the dark side. It's so true. I've always said that there's a lot of truth to that statement. The root of all evil is the money magic system. <laughs> And people want to fight you when you say that, you know, because, right, the new agers and the, you know, the, the new age cosmology, the brainwash is it's not the love of money. <laughs> right. I mean, that's, that's out there. Right. It's, it, yeah. So it's like, it's, it, 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 we do need to put food in our, on our tables and a roof over our head, uh -huh. hopefully a hot shower. And so <laughs> it's not easy to balance living in the physical with, you know, the, um, the ultimate or the optimal, you know, um, approach, which is exactly what you said, which would be meritocracy. And, and, yeah. and so it, it, it really, it's so weird that you said that because like, I've had all these like dreams in my life about like how I always just knew like, and again, cause our souls know, right. We, we, we really do know what is holding us back. And it's, you're right. The debt based in slave, you know, slavery system where, you know, when we're born, our social security number is really just a, a, a number that they use to trade. <laughs> right. Yes, or a commodity, what they call chattel, uh, within their system, but the system is totally corrupt. So the joke ultimately is on them that no matter what they do to us, ultimately they're doing it to themselves as well because everything is connected and they're actually preventing themselves from moving forward. And in, and in a lot of ways, I told you, the unintended consequences are, when they torture us or abuse us or whatever you want to call it, they ultimately are providing an opportunity for us to grow stronger and ultimately reject what the, that dark side or dissonance and then move to the light. So I wanted to, well said, I, I wanted to, you know, I watched your podcast that you did with Alan um, simulation theory. Yeah. Sakyan, Alan Sakyan. Yeah. He's a trip. Alan's amazing guy too, but just fucking mind blowing. I mean, I've watched it three or four times. I really wanted to, huh. we ended this podcast. I really wanted to focus on what you guys mentioned in there and talked about, which is that, you know, you can't, you can't really open the capacitance of your heart chakra. Yes. You got to do inner work. Yes. You got to integrate trauma. Yes. You got to do all those things, but you really first have to get to a point where you do love and trust yourself. And yeah, hard so, to do so many people on this planet that's their obstacle yeah but they truly do not love and trust themselves and as i've always said and again i was a guy that struggled with it i'm sure we all have it. we all points. do come on jay but i mean we are right we all do it but it's like as you said the dark side puts little nuggets and carrots in front of us all the time so that we have that doubt and we have that and again there's a million different ways you can be introspective you can do you know the inner work you can have age regression. There's a little, a lot of ways to, to, to attempt to solve it, but obviously you have to do it yourself and you have to be focused on it. But right. you can't, I mean, again, and even relationships, Robert, like you can't even love your wife or your husband or your kids or your daughters until you love yourself. Yep. And but that what, starts with, but Jay, that starts, remember what I said? It starts with forgiveness, Right. Exactly. Uh, forgiving yourself. You can't really forgive anybody else until you learn how to forgive yourself, which again is a really hard thing to do. S to be sincere about it. And that doesn't, that's not a blanket like thing, the, uh, a carte blanche. Oh, hey, sure, I forgave myself. Like I'm absolved of all sin. I can go out and kill again. It's like, what? no, no, you didn't learn your lesson at all there, buddy. You have to, you have to forgive yourself completely, fully. And going forward, realize that you're still in a state of becoming. Exactly. So, right. So you're going to make mistakes. You, you, the goal is perfection. And, and there's going to be a lot of obstacles along the path. Sometimes you do great, sometimes you don't. And, but that's everybody. And here's the other thing. Everybody's doing this at their own pace. It doesn't matter about all these other people. And that's the, the, the really crappy thing about social media right now. Right. You know, people are just out there virtue signaling and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. 
and, and it's, it's a huge distraction. It's an impediment towards their growth. I don't, well, I mean, well said, I don't know anything that's in the mainstream now. Again, like you said, this is all, there's zero, almost no coherence online. You know, when it first, <laughs> when it first started out, again, when the internet first initiated back in the early, I want to say midnight or early nineties, mid nineties, before, you know, broadband was ubiquitous and right. people were dialing up, you did have communities of like-minded people that were able to connect. And ultimately you, you actually probably made relationships where you were in person, right? Yeah. You actually physically communicated with a, another person. And as you've said, you know, the, the dark forces, whoever they are, they, they're all mimickers and duplicators and, and copiers. They can't create, they have no ability to create organic. And that's where the internet has so excelled now is that people think that they can actually utilize the technology you know, and I, and there's probably a debate on like whether or not you and I are actually really truly physically connected right now because we can see each other, but we're not obviously yeah. in each other's presence. So right. the question really is, is, is there energy? Is our aura, arc fields right now in, re, in resonance with it, each other because we are linked heart-wise and kind of mind-wise, uh, spirit-wise, or are we not? You know, that's yeah, always no, a question I've it's asked. It's a good question. Hang on. It's, it's yes. The answer is yes on a limited scale, we are connected through the web of light because we choose to be. Right. All right. So that's, and of course, when like when you and I and Rex and everybody were sitting and Jeff, we were sitting together at a table facing each other, then yes, the energy was much more directly connected without the technology getting in the way. Right. Right. So that's the reason why people did sit around and a lot of things were worked out around the, uh, you know, a meal, right, right, or or in a living space, whatever you want to call it, and it, we, we're going to have to go back to it. I'm sorry to tell you, like no, I recognize that that the, what we're doing here is is very um, limited, and also there's a, a time frame. I, you and I are not going to have this form of communications available to us going forward not for much longer, brother. Right, so I I don't care. No. I really don't care. No. but because I know it'll continue in a different way, and that's fine with me. Right. Right. And so many people, I'm glad you said that because that's profound. So many people do care. Well, I know. So many people's lives are so based on this false reality, this illusion, whatever this is. And again. Well, I told you it's a web of lies. Web of lies. It really is. If you look at it, if you can be honest with yourself and most of the stuff on the internet and not just the internet, we know. Totally true, dude. Okay. There's the deep, what do they call it? The dark web. and Dark web. So they say there's a, I've seen graphics. I don't know if it's true, but what we see on the internet is just the tip of the pyramid or the right. tip of the iceberg or whatever. And there's all this other stuff that's going on underneath it. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's, there's literally sites. I mean, I've seen parts of them. There's sites where there's like, you can watch human beings tortured to death to death. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. On the, dark, on the dark web <laughs> and then also hacked and eaten. I mean, every negative horrific, you know, malevolent thing that you could conjure or think of is actually happening. Well, and all the corruption is being done through that, through that, that, that level of connectivity. Yeah. So, but it, like I said, it's a house of cards. It will come down on its own head at some point. And that's why it's important for us to have this discussion now. So people who want to move away from that can start doing so early as opposed to just being caught. Well, like literally unaware, but it's, I mean, look, the writing's been on the wall for a while. The, 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 the world didn't come to an end on 2012. Exactly. The old world did the did. old world. did. did. The, the, the world of total darkness is, is in decline and it's freaking out. And that's why it seems to be coming out of the woodwork. It's catching a lot of people saying, what, what happened? Well, it's always been there. It's just now being revealed and it has to be so that, each one of us can make a choice, a clear choice, not a, a vague thing, you know, like a theory. No, it's like, it's obvious that the, that the level of lies that are being told to us, the level of corruption and cruelty is so great. You have to make, we all have to choose. Do you, do you want to participate in that anymore? Go down that path? Or do you want to go to, you know, collaboration, cooperation, compassion? Is, is that, or is that the path you want to go? If it's so, start now. 
Yeah. Pack your bags, you know, make a plan. It's just mind blowing that you and I can have such a profound, amazing conversation talking about these type of things. And yet, you know, I can talk to my dad who's 74 years old, you know, multimillionaire has no clue. But I mean, sorry. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, there's nothing to be sorry for. It just, it is what it is, but it's, no, like, it is. it's sad, Jay. Cause I remember that was, that was explained to me as we move into this particular, whatever this period of time, this 10 year window we're in now, right. it's almost over right. that, that, <clears throat> that quite a few people that we know and love are going to choose to continue down the path of the dark side. Yeah. And there's nothing we can do about that. That's their choice. And it's, but it's really, I, the reason that I was told that is to prepare myself right, exactly. and help others to be prepared for this process, because it's, it's really painful to see the ones you love not wake up and, or not choose to go to, into the light and be of service and, you know, in, in, in the process really help themselves. It's amazing too. Like I've, I've been so conscious in my communication with certain people, my dad being one, mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, I've been soul to soul, sending him energy, sending him love, mm -hmm. you know, attempting to work my quote unquote capacitance <laughs> magic. Yeah. And see if I, you know, see if I can shift the balance, but you're right. It's even in my communication and even in different treating him differently and with love and all those things that we talk about, it's just, it's, it, it's, it, it, I'm beyond being concerned or sad, right? But, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I, 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 I recognize that it's going to be very weird for a lot of people on this planet when this house of cards crashes. Yeah, scary, shocking. I mean, they, we could, there's no, there, I think words really pale. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and it's, but it just, it's going to happen. And that's one of the reasons I've been. Robert, it's close for it's close. Yeah, I know it's really close, and that's why I've been working doing shows with yeah. you and other people and the website and stuff. And it's it's going to be okay though. See, it this is, is okay. I tell my I'm I'm I really am an optimist despite of all yeah. this stuff that we're talking about. I'm optimistic 100%. because I have reason to be. I know who we are. Right. I know we are souls. We are seeds of light in this garden. Yeah. This wonderful web of light. Exactly. It is intelligent and loving and living. It's alive, okay? Exactly. It's all about life and creativity and consciousness and, and, and com compassion for all others because we're all connected. We're all family. So, yes, I'm concerned about them. I care for people that, that, that are going down that slippery slope into the dark side. But I know that there's always an opportunity for them to turn around and, and move back into the light and be welcomed home right. into the into the you know, into a place of, of compassion. And, and, and it, to me that I think, oh, I didn't, did I send you that one with the, the girl? Somebody sent me something the other day. Oh, I'd sent them the book, the astral city. Right. And they said, Hey, have you seen this? And it was this amazing little exchange between oh, yeah, yeah, uh, the old man, the old man and the girl. Yeah. yeah so, so yeah, I mean, it doesn't make sense when you say it like that. Let me, let me just describe this for people. This guy lost his wife six months previously, and he was very depressed naturally. And he'd sort of given up on, he didn't have anything to live for is what he was saying. There's no reason to live. So he felt until one day he was in the grocery store looking like a really grumpy old guy. Yeah. And, and his uh, mom and her daughter were going down the aisle and the, the daughter was in the shopping cart and she saw this old guy and she said to him, hi, old man. It's my birthday. I want a hug. <laughs> and he just looked at her and because this is on a, the surveillance camera. It's kind of funny. He looked at her really weird, like what? And startled. And then he gave her a hug and his life changed from that moment forward. Phenomenal. He, he, she, that little girl. Well, okay. What looks like a little girl is actually a very old soul who, who, who was doing something that was, um, um divine mm -hmm. that's why he said i think she's an angel well okay duh she's a messenger bringing you a personal message that don't give up you right. moron you look look at how beautiful life is it, it all turned on just from one hug from one little girl from a stranger who's not really a stranger is she because you welcomed her into your home yeah you know and see that to me that was just a snippet that was the tip of the freaking iceberg of how beautiful it is when we all of us reach out and actually connect to our extended family in the cosmos 
Right. It's freaking amazing. It's so beautiful. I can't hardly stand it. Man, <laughs> hard for me to hard for me to pick up over that. That's profound stuff. Yeah, I mean, but that's see, that's our divine birthright, Jay. Is, man. Okay, is. and that's why when people say they want to go down the dark side, I'm like, why? Why would you want to hang out over there with those souls that are so demented, delusional? And dangerous, literally, you know, they, they just want to do harm. And all this little girl wanted to do was a hug and, and just brought this man back to life. <laughs> I know. You know, and you know, he'll pay it forward, right? Yeah, absolutely. He didn't say that part. Oh, I know. He said he was going to live the rest. He's going to live the rest of her life to watch her grow up. That is no, no, but I know. But aside from the reciprocity yeah, with will. the girl, you know, he's going to go ahead and pay that forward to other people. You know it yeah. because that's how the light works. That's how it works. Yeah. So. It's, yeah. it's, it's so beautiful. It Life is, is so beautiful. And, 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 and something to, to add to that is that no matter how down you get, no mm. matter if you're at that, you know, where that guy was with no po motive or purpose to live, just keep going because behind, you know, the loss of everything and the dark night of the soul is the greatest expansion, right? And I always say from entropy comes creation. Mm. There's, there, there really is the opportunity as long as you don't give up. And so that's, you know, kind of, we said that earlier that the people that go into shock and freak out when everything crumbles and it's coming, <laughs> you can't kill yourself or opt out because as we know, there's consequences to that. Yeah. You'll end up being stuck in a much lower place for a much longer time. If you do that to yourself, we don't have that right. Absolutely true. Yeah. I almost made that mistake. And the reason I didn't, though, as I've told you and others, is because there was an intervention right. from beings from, from a higher realm, a more loving place, a, more, a much more aware. Yeah, they just, they, she, they gave me the opportunity to kind of just snap out of it, much like that girl was doing for that old man. Same thing happened to me, dude. So I think it happens to, you know, a lot. I think it happens to pretty much everybody, but not everybody talks about it. And that's fine. That's fine. You know, but it, but I think some people have to be pioneers in that regard and just say it publicly that, hey, you know what? Life is a freaking miracle. Yeah, yeah. It is, and it's not to be wasted or abused in, in your own life or others. You know, abuse in, of, of any form of life is, is, it's a crime, and there's, there's consequences for that. I mean, beautiful, man, beautiful. <laughs> Robert, this has been such an amazing podcast. I mean, every time you and I get together, it's amazing. Um, how can people who watch this podcast connect with you online? What's the best way for them to do that? Oh, thank you, Jay. So my website is unicusmagazine.com. It's spelled U-N-I-C-U-S magazine.com. And uh, if you feel the need to email me, I'll do my best to answer you through the website. And um, for as long as that's up, we'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> but in the meantime, you know, um, or the way you can connect to me and everybody else, not just on this world and beyond, is through the web of light. And if you want to understand that, I've put together some graphics and other you know, material that you can think about. And uh, that's all on my website there for free. So please check that out. Yeah. And honestly, guys, Robert puts out more books and intel than really I think anybody on the planet. And he has no financial motive. The guy is truly, uh, I mean, he's just, a good Samaritan to times a million. I mean, he just is, does, he just does so much to help and push out information and he's not a Pollyanna. He's not, you know, a new ager. Um, you know, he's real. And you know, that's why him and I have become such good friends. And, you know, I'll just say this. Um, I appreciate you, man. And Thank as you. I always tell you, I love you, man. I have I love you too, Jay. A, lot of, a lot of love for you. And of course your family. Thank you. And, uh, and I can't wait for, you know, me and Monica and my family to get together with you and yours. And obviously you and I have been together, but not our family. So that's right. Um, I think it's important that we both say, you know, again, this is February 13th. This will probably run sometime in March or early April of this year, 2020. Everybody needs to focus on raising their vibration, you know, getting their soul to a level where they open their heart chakra and they're accepting, allowing, you know, as you say, peaceful, kind, concerned, caring, compassionate, all of those things will allow you to when the time comes and we all both know the time is coming that you are going to have the best chance to make it into wherever the next, you know, level density experience vibration is. And, um, you know, with that said, dude, we'll end the podcast. Let me just say, remember guys, 
raise your vibration to optimize your love creation.